Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making some apple turnovers. Now I have made apple turnovers in the past with puff pastry but in this instance I'm going to use a buttery short crust pastry. I was going to do a very flaky pastry but I decided that I would just go with a buttery short crust one and uh, this particular recipe for the pastry is from uh, foodwishes.com which I'm trying out for the first time because it looked very good. I do have a slight concern that there's too much water in it because wa too much water in pastry makes the pastry tougher um, but we'll see how it goes. Certainly when I saw how uh, John, the guy who made it on that, that website, did it, it, it was very sort of nice and crisp. So. Um, the, the ingredients are uh, few, sort of very few basically. I have uh, 256 grams of plain flour and I have um, 30 grams of caster sugar and a teaspoon of salt. I also have 113 grams of um, butter which has been in the freezer for about half an hour and I've cut that into uh, before it went in the freezer into 16 pieces and I have some ice cold water um, that's 90 uh, millilitres of ice cold water so the way we're going to make the pastry is to put half the flour 128 grams into our food processor and on top of that we're going to drop our 16 cubes of butter and I'm using the sharp blade rather than the, the, the pastry blade in this processor because the butter's been in the freezer and um, on top of that I'm going to put the other half of the flour like that and then the sugar and the teaspoon of salt, some of which I've just spilled. And then we're going to just pulse that until the butter has broken down into about pea-sized chunks. So it's repeated processing, that the pulsing. So that looks quite good. Um, the butter's generally broken down into chunky pieces. So then I'm going to add the water. And I'm going to pulse it again, longer pulses this time, until the mixture um, should turn into resembling fine breadcrumbs. And what you want to do is scrape the sides down to get any mixture off the sides as you're doing this pulsing. This silly little spatula was provided with the processor. A 
and then give it another pulse to get it all combined into those breadcrumbs again. That looks ideal. So we're going to tip that out onto the work surface. And what I'm going to do then is just use my hands to mix in some little bits of flour that I can still see very gently to get that distributed evenly. And then I'm going to squeeze with my hands the dough together, picking up any excess. like that. I'm going to flatten it into a disc and then I'm going to wrap that in plastic wrap and I'm going to chill it in the fridge for at least an hour. I'm actually going to do it for at least two hours and the reason for that is I'm going to make the, the filling now and I want to give time for that to cool down before I roll out the pastry. So that's the, the pastry made. I'll chill that and we'll get on and we'll do the filling. So for the filling I have um, three Bramley apples. Now Bramley apples are cooking apples, that's uh, in England, and they're very tart. So you want a tart apple, Granny Smith's would be good if you can't get cooking apples. Not every country has the concept of cooking apples. Um, and with the skins and the cores, that weighs 700 grams. I may have more filling than I need for my turnovers, but that's fine because cold, it can go on top of my muesli in the mornings. So I have my three Bramley apples. I have a teaspoon of cinnamon. I have 30 grams of soft brown sugar and 50 grams of caster sugar. And um, in a bowl, I have the juice of a lemon. You don't actually need that. I'm going to use that to stop the apples from oxidising as I chop them up. And I'll strain that juice off uh, before we go on to the next step. In a large pan, I also have uh, 28 grams of butter ready to melt and, and brown as we go through the cooking process. So the first thing to do is to peel and dice the apples. And then we want to chop them into pieces. So 
So I'll chop them into quarters. I'm going to take out the core. And then I'm going to cut each piece into three and then into four the other way. But you cut them as you wish. those into the bowl and I'm just going to give those a stir around to coat them with the juice so having uh, chopped our apples the next thing I'm going to do is to put the heat on to melt the butter and then we'll um, put in the apples the cinnamon and the sugar and a little bit of water if necessary and we'll cook these apples down until they're soft still retaining the shape but they're soft and a little bit sticky so that's our butter melted and beginning to brown and I'm going to put the apples in having strained off the excess lemon juice I'm just going to toss the apples to get them coated in butter. And then I'm going to sprinkle over the 50 grams of caster sugar and then the 30 grams of soft brown sugar I'm going to let that cook down, releasing juices, and the juices will begin to evaporate. And as that's cooking away like that, I'm going to sprinkle over the cinnamon. And stir that in. As you can imagine, this, the aroma that comes off that cinnamon is fantastic. Now that's reduced quite nicely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to put those apples into a bowl and allow them to cool down completely and I'll come back when the pastry has chilled for at least two hours and the apples are completely cool and then we'll go on to rolling out the pastry and making the turnovers. Well I'm back with you 
and our pastry has cooled for two hours and our apples have cooled down as well so what I'm going to do is um, I have my oven preheating first of all I have my, the oven preheating uh, to 200 celsius that's 180 celsius with a fan 400 fahrenheit and I've got a couple of baking trays which I've lined with silicon mats but parchment paper would be fine and I'm going to divide the pastry into four pieces and I'm going to roll out each piece individually and cover the other ones up again so I'll just form that into a, a ball sort of or a, a disc And I want to roll it out about eight inches, but it doesn't have to be exact and it doesn't have to be round necessarily. that's about okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a quarter of my apple mixture and put it into the middle like that then I'm going to fold it over leaving a gap around the edge there I'm going to press that down like that and then I'm going to fold it in on itself and I got this idea from food wishes dot com once I've got it in like that I'm going to use my fingers to make dimples all the way around just like that and I'm going to put that onto a baking tray so with um, the turnovers rolled out I have a, an egg wash which is uh, one egg beaten with a little bit of milk and I'm going to brush all over the pastry
and with that I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of sugar, granulated sugar, over the top. like that and then I'm going to make three incisions into the top this is to let the steam out if you don't let the steam out um, then it's got nowhere to go and it will make the bottom of the pastry soggy in all probability So I'm going to do that for the other two and then I'm going to put it in the oven, put them in the oven and bake them for 25 to 30 minutes until they're a nice golden brown. Then I'll take them out and let them cool down and I'll come back and show you the results. Well I've taken our apple turnovers out of the oven and I've allowed them to cool down. The, the, when they come out the, the filling is piping hot inside, it would burn you if you tried to eat it. And I've let them cool down. So as you can see they bake to a nice golden brown colour. Um, I'm hoping they're quite crispy as I cut them. Well I wouldn't I would normally just bite into it, but I'll cut it. And as you can see, it's got a nice filling there. So let's have a little taste. Mm. that's very good indeed the pastry is crispy but nice and buttery um, and very tender the filling is obviously quite juicy got the apple and the hint, hint of cinnamon and because I've used cooking apples there's that little bit of tartness to them you could use any apple you wanted of course I would recommend green apples like Granny Smith's which are quite tart but if you have a favourite then that's the one to use. So that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me the thumbs up below the video and please click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on which will take you to my blog and show you the recipe there and I'll also put a link to it below the video. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.